Welcome, writers. Today we have a lot of exciting stuff to talk about. We're going to see how panels, those little squares in comic books and storyboards, translate into paragraphs. My name is Robert Jones, and this is The Story Detective. So grab a snack and your favorite beverage, and stick around because this just might revolutionize the way you look at the written page. It could also turn into a three brownie problem. begin today. I want to say thank you to everyone who subscribed to my channel. We're just getting started and I have 17 subscribers which may not seem like a lot but I thought that was great that we're off to a roll that people are interested already and you find that this video has value then go ahead and hit that subscribe button ring that bell so you'll be notified of all my future videos and I will try my utmost not to disappoint. <music> Last time we talked about sequential art, which is what the panel-to-panel -panel pages in comic books are called, how you do a sequence in pictures. It's basically glorified storyboards, which is the same thing that's used in film. Sequential art is developed by guys like Joe Kubert, who was a master of storytelling on the page, whose school I went to, and then later I worked in comic books. But it's the same type of storytelling that's used by guys like Frank Miller. And if you haven't heard of him, you've probably seen his films, Sin City, The Dark Knight Returns, and 300. And there's a reason why all that got turned into films, because Frank Miller uses that same type of storytelling, and it's very visual, and it's very captivating. I remember in grade school, when you were writing and first learning about paragraphs, and your teachers told you, a paragraph is just one idea. And when you change ideas, you paragraph again. Then as writers, you probably came to books and you looked at paragraphs that go on and on and on, and sometimes for entire scenes. And you're like, so that one idea could be a whole scene? How do I manipulate this on the page? I once read a scene about a dinner, and it lasted for 25 pages. That's an entire chapter. Now, if you translate that to film, what does it look like? The cameraman is sitting there at the same angle for 25 minutes, filming those people eating. Now, whether it's book or film, you don't want to bore your readers unless that's your intention. If you want to have a scene where it's stagnant on somebody just picking at their food for several minutes, that's the effect you're going to get. Otherwise, you don't want that. So how do you paragraph on a page? How do you keep things visual? Because the written word is an art form, and what you put on that page affects the reader's emotion. It affects pacing. We're going to learn how panels translate into paragraphs. If it's one idea in a panel, the same thing applies for sequential art storytelling. One panel, one idea. Even if you have a crowd of things going on, like 300, where there's a lot of Spartans fighting and they're all on the, the battlefield at once, there's still one shot, one main action that you're seeing while everything is going on. Same with a crowd scene, if it's in New York City. There's one main action, and maybe there's other stuff going on around it. And think about that. Every story has an establishing shot. And you may look at an establishing shot in a film of New York City and it has a panoramic view of the New York City skyline. So what do viewers take in on that? Are they looking at every single detail in the time that it's on the frame? No. And if you're a writer, can you describe all the angles and cuts of every building? all the familiar historical buildings on that skyline? No, you, you would bore your readers to death. What you see when you're looking at a large panel or establishing shot like that is you're taking in mood, you're taking in atmosphere, and you're taking in a few choice details. Paragraphs begin not just with new ideas, but every time your mental camera changes to a new perspective or you change to a different point of view with a different character, that's a new paragraph, just like in dialogue when the dialogue changes between characters. No one wants to read a paragraph that runs on for 25 pages describing a dinner. Even if you're a literary genius striving for the world's longest paragraph, people are going to think, ugh, heavy. And heavy could 
be like a pair of cement shoes that sinks your story to the bottom of a literary ocean. We are now going to look at two examples from a Sherlock Holmes story I wrote a while back. It was a practice story. And they say it takes approximately a million words for a writer to learn his chops. I don't know if I agree with all that, but I do believe that every writer should have a practice novel or two where they experiment with techniques. And those experiments are never wasted. The, the book that I wrote here that got shelved, from that generated the idea for an entire series that I'm now working on. And the techniques that I learned and the scenes that are still there I have for future stories if there's an appropriate scene to put them in or to use them as examples for things like this. So this first example is framing out a scene. It's a simple cinematic technique also used in comic books and storyboards and it frames the scene from Dr. Watson's point of view looking through a carriage window. Gazing from the window of our growler at the passing landscape of Upper Norwood I remembered how lovely a place it was last spring, how every tree was bejeweled in leaves the color of jade and emerald. The gardens upon every lawn sparkled with blossoms of amethyst, ruby, and gold. Viewing those same gardens in present, however, I beheld nothing more than dried leaves and yellow stalks. The days of wind and rain that preceded winter had turned their soil into mud that overflowed onto lawns and dark clumps that resembled melted chocolate. Brown water puddled in depressions and ran churning in roadside gutters. My gaze shifted to Holmes, who was seated across from me. His eyes were closed, his mind upon what? I could scarce imagine what murky waters churned within him. So you see in that example how easy it is to frame out a scene and to bring that into the perspective of Dr. Watson. It's keeping the town from his point of view, based on the last time he saw it, which reflects in the current mood and the situation that's going on with the story between uh, him and Sherlock Holmes, and when is Watson never worried about Holmes. In this second example, we're going to look at how to make description active. What is it I mean by an active description? You could use anything to make your description active, any physical object or person going through the scene in your story that would essentially take the place of the point of view of the camera. In this case, describing an English manor house, I used ivy to run along the, the house, the windows, to basically be my active partner. When I caught up with Holmes, he stood at the foot of the drive, staring through iron bars, the only visible mode of entry through a towering wall of brick. In the distance, a large villa crouched behind leafless skeletons of elm. Runners of ivy concealed most of the villa's red brick surface. Creeping up window sashes, it spread out like an invading army across the border of quarterfoils below the eaves, and ended in brown leafless tendrils that choked columns of marble supporting a portico at the front entrance. As you can see, it didn't take a lot of words to do that. And secondly, you get a feeling of the occupant, the owner of the house. You understand that he's into concealment because of the ivy running across the window. And as it's got its stranglehold around the columns on the portico, which also look like sentinels guarding the front gate. So essentially, it's a prison. These are but two examples on how you can make your writing more visual. And yet, as Sherlock Holmes once said, a logician can infer from a single drop of water a Niagara. So take these examples, blow them out in your own writing, and do likewise. Whether you're writing fiction or nonfiction, whether you want to be a whisperer of words who seduces people into your stories, or a Jedi of journalism that just wants to punch up your writing with more visual techniques, these things can help you to become a better writer 